Sailavi came from Idel. It was she had come up with the verses of Sailavi, mm. um, different lyrics, but that's where it started. And then I think you know the concept of actually putting Irish music into a pop song. We were like, going, what? That was his idea, but it was just like that's weird. You're either going to love it or hate it. Yeah. And I think all the other quirkiness kind of just came from us. It's just like um, all the sayings, like you know, what do you like and you know, fight like me down, all that. That came from us just yapping to each other, kind of chatting and him kind of going, what are they talking about? But then I suppose they became really iconic, you know. Yeah, and that's the, it. And, like. the, and then the Irish music became really iconic too. So mm. um, the amount of people that have we've heard stories of like, you know, especially at weddings where people have broken ankles and, le- and God knows. I mean, there's been so many because it comes on and they, people just go wild. Triggered. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to another episode of Finch Reviews. I am, of course, your host, Connor Finn. And on this week's episode, I feel like I need a drum roll here, but I was beyond thrilled. Like, I mean, ecstatic. You'll hear it in my voice throughout the whole podcast to have a Finterviews exclusive chat with the phenomenal Sinead O'Carroll. Now, if you do not know who Sinead is, shame on you. Honestly, shame on you. She's, of course, one quarter of the iconic Irish girl group Bewitched, who you may recognise from their worldwide hit, C'est La Vie. I mean, anybody that grew up in the last... 20 years or so will know that this is one of the biggest (laughs) Irish pop songs of the century, of the millennia, of all time. And yeah, I had the pleasure of chatting with Sinead all about following her passion in performing arts and meeting the other girls by chance to the formation of Bewitched and the whirlwind ride of being part of one of the most iconic Irish pop groups of all time. Oh, this interview was such a joy to host and I just oh it was just a dream come true honestly Sinead was beyond lovely and beyond generous just tell me all about her life and experiences being in this worldwide sensation of a group and all of the crazy and I mean genuinely like crazy stories that all came from it and even from the last couple of years from Dance With Stars and from reunions, this is probably going to be one of my best interviews till day. I'm going to say it right now. Um, but without giving too much away, please enjoy this latest episode of Finterviews with the brilliant Sinead O'Garl. Well, welcome back to another episode of Finterviews on the show this week. I'm delighted to have on the iconic, and I cannot stress that enough, because, no, the amount of people I've gotten in touch about this as well. Sinead O'Carroll, how's it going, Sinead? Oh, my God. Iconic. That's a first. I'm very well, Connor. How are you? <laughs> Not too bad at all. I'm so delighted that we uh, managed to get each other uh, free for a wee minute. Thank God for this pandemic. Am I right? <laughs> Oh, I know. And it was so funny because when we arranged this, there wasn't the announcement that the kids were not, you know, they were going back to school. So obviously they are upstairs in separate rooms and I'm like, okay, I have to do my Zoom now as well. So yeah, it's a, it is a bit of a juggling act, but it's good. Yeah, it's good to have a little distraction for maybe half an hour. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we'll see how long we'll last. See if the Wi-Fi yes. cuts out, if the kids oh, yeah, come running down. So yeah, there's a very much a time sensitive interview. I appreciate it so much. No, um, um, but yeah, thank you so much again just for agreeing to come on. Um, I was just kind of saying there beforehand, like, um, yeah, just kind of getting these wee bits of Bob set up. Um, I'm always trying to reach out to new people and uh, yourself. Um, I did never expect to actually get in touch with at all. So um, the fact that this is even happening right now, I'm just stating this before like the podcast even ends. I'm just being like, I'm so grateful. <laughs> <laughs> You're very welcome. <laughs> but now that I've, you know, we've gone through all the Pleiades, let's get deep down yes. into it. All right. <laughs> Not that this is like, any too serious, anything too serious at yes, all. Like, yes. I, I, I know myself. Um, but Sinead, <laughs> you know, I've been harking you up here, but for maybe the people that don't know you, I mean, 
Rude, mm-hmm. honestly. Have they been living under a rock? Shocking. Shocking. <laughs> the knack of them. Uh, maybe tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, and kind of your background, what you're known for. Um, I, I think this is hilarious. I'm asking you what you're known for. <laughs> Go on. What, what I'm known for. I, well, <laughs> for those people that don't know, I am known for being uh, one member of the uh, girl, the Irish girl band, Bewitched, who we kind of had four number ones in the 90s. Um, 98 was the fir- the very first one. So we were, I don't think there's been another kind of Irish girl band since. And I think before us, it was probably the Nolan sisters. So, mm. um, and we did go into the Guinness Book of Records uh, for, you know, being the first uh, girl band ever had their first single going into number one. People think it was the Spice Girls, but actually Wannabe went in at three and then went to one. Yes. So we do claim that, like, that we, we, we claim that, but... um. <laughs> <laughs> I'm originally from uh, Newbridge um, in Kildare. That's where I grew up. Uh, I'm the eldest. I have a brother and two sisters and just always been into kind of singing and dancing and always wanted to kind of be a bit. I was always wanted to be a Billy Barry kid, um, mm. but mum didn't drive. So I couldn't, you know, travel to Dublin. And it was one of those things that I just learned stuff like that from, you know, local pantomime uh production school productions community games and I just soaked it up but um yeah always kind of that was my first passion and um myself and my sister were always kind of you know dancing around the the living room and in our leotards and I proclaiming I will be on the late late (laughs) um I also had a vivid imagination so um but it just goes to show you actually as a child having that freedom to be you know just expand your mind and we and a lot of kids just do that naturally mm. um they don't realize that they're actually you know manifesting possibly what's down what's in their future mm. so um uh yeah so it was yeah so that's kind of you know my very start background <laughs> No, I think, uh, yeah, you, you, you wrapped it up pretty succinctly there. I was, uh, <laughs> so you're a professional, you know what you're doing here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, that's it. No, as well. <laughs> I suppose it's um, anybody as well. Like, it's funny how, you know, this is where it starts off. Like, I remember when I was running around in leotards in the, in the living room as well. Like, God, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I think I'd, like, I think my mom's be slagging and shit. I mean, like, if I was running around in leotards. Uh, <laughs> but frig it. Um, but no, it's not hilarious that, like, that's where it first started off. And I mean, everybody, yeah. you know, I think it's this kind of general thing for anybody growing up in Ireland to be like, what's the pinnacle? Like, late late toy show, or not even toy show, just late yeah, late show in was, general. It was. Like, but. <laughs> Absolutely, because for me, it was kind of like um, the Billy Barry kids were the only kids that were got on the toy show. So it was just like, I have to get there. I have to get up there. How am I going to get there? Do you know what I mean? And um, and I remember my granddad, he was uh, he worked for Jacobs and Jacobs used to do these ads with all the kids. And I was like, how can I be on the TV? I need to be on the TV. And it was kind of it was kind of weird, but. I remember saying to my mum and dad going, so what age will you let me travel to Dublin on the train by myself in order to kind of do my acting classes and do my singing? Because for me, it was like you had to be in Dublin. Yeah. Um, because there was no stage schools in where I grew up. And, you know, that that wasn't around when we were kind of growing up. Mm. So she said 15. So the minute I was 15, it was just like, right. Uh, <laughs> I booked Diggs Lane Dance Centre classes and I booked the Gaiety School of Acting and I used to go up on a Saturday and just do do those classes um and I continue them up until I did my leaving cert um and then I wanted to enroll in a kind of a a theater that did singing dancing and acting you know school but there was no schools that did everything it was either you do full-time acting full-time dance full-time so I did the dance you're like I'm a triple threat come on guys yeah well well, the thing is (laughs) <laughs> my my vision for myself was musical theatre. That's what mm. my vision was. So it was, right, I need to do, you know, I need to do it all. Uh, so I enrolled in the dance, um, the College of Dance, and it was kind of, I was just like, oh, right, okay. So these kids have been doing ballet since they were like five. And I realised I was so out of my depth. It was mm. like, okay. So <clears throat> anyway, I I stuck with them for two years. And then in my third year, I wanted to go to London to do actual musical theatre, which was everything. So I got a scholarship. I went to the UK. I did it. 
And then I had another realization. I was like 21. And I was like, oh, okay, so these kids in the UK, they can go to, they can drop out of school when they're 12. And they can go to these schools where they can still do their, um, their, normal subjects yeah. but they can also focus on which we don't have that set up in Ireland mm. so then I was coming in as a 21 year old to these girls with, like that were 16 having legs like just wrapped <laughs> around their necks going oh my god what am I I'm deluded myself by that. what have I been doing <laughs> but I kind of just stuck with it and I kind of knew that I was always on the back foot I suppose yeah um in terms of in terms of that like and then I really then got I threw myself into the drama, actually. And uh, there was a fabulous Irish uh, um, teacher there. And it was just like, I absolutely loved it. And as it came to the end of that year, I kind of realized I should have been doing three years of that in London. Yeah. But then, I mean, you're going back 25 years ago when the fees, I remember, were like £8,000. So that's like probably the equivalent of probably 20 grand like now. So it was just not sustainable for no, God. my family. For And also in the UK, you get like subsidized by the Arts Council. They've mm. got like a really local authorities where you can actually apply. They don't have that in Ireland either. So it was just like, you know what, I'll come back to Ireland and I'll just put the CV out there and try and do shows like which I did say in the gate and the Olympia and just kind of get working I suppose mm. um did that came home you know and I and I was doing that um and then there was a place in Dublin called Diggs Lane which everybody that was involved in either theatre or music just always was there mm. um and I remember Riverdance uh, rehearsing there and, you know, you'd have the, all the actors, everybody just used to use that place. And <laughs> while I was there, I met, I met Kiwi, which I thought was Edel because I didn't know they were twins. <laughs> I didn't know for months that there was twins. Yeah. So, so I met Kiwi and I was just like, yep, to Kiwi. And then all of a sudden I was then talking to Adele and Adele never said, why is this weirdo sitting down talking to me as if like she knows me? Um, <laughs> it was so weird. And Adele was like, oh, you know what? You know, I'd love to, um, I'm going to, you know, do a demo. And I was like, oh, you know what? I've been doing shows around here and I've been doing this, that and the other. I'd like to maybe just be me on stage. So I was thinking the same thing. Mm. And it literally was like, listen, come to my house and, um, uh, you know, maybe we'll do it together. I've got, uh, I've got a sister. She didn't say twin, right? So <laughs> left that out. I, mm. <laughs> I rock up right. to the house. I rock up to her house, and then she answers the door, and then Ke- and I'm like, oh my god, you're twins. <laughs> it was just like, it was so weird, but um, yeah, so bizarre. Uh, so I remember going to my Stephanie Dell went to Captain America's. Mm-hmm. Uh, we sat sitting there. And Classic. <laughs> classic absolutely and um <laughs> we were just having lunch and I said so we're going to do this together and she was like yeah and I said to her there and then I said I don't know how when and uh where this is all going to happen but I said I know it's going to happen and she was just like oh god what do you mean and I was like I can just I can just feel it and she was she said oh well I'll never catch my you know hatch my chickens before they're hatched type of thing or yeah, whatever yeah. um <laughs> you're going like no I've no always, no it's there <laughs> exactly and I, and I would have always, I, I, I'm very, those feelings have always kind of been really strong and I've known. And it's really weird because on paper, it didn't look like it would. Edel was 17. She just, they didn't, uh, Edel and Kiwi didn't do their, they did their junior cert and then they went out kind of working and they just wanted to kind of be in music. Yeah. Whereas I had done my, you know, done transition year. I did school, I did transition year, my leaving cert, I'd gone to college for three mm. years. So I was like seven years older than them. And at that, at that time in your life, when you're 23, 22. Oh, like you think it's worlds apart. Like, like. It's, it, it's worlds apart, but it's so, it's because people kept saying like they're 17 and I was more of a kind of jazz, you know, contemporary dancer. They were yeah. like pure, pure hip hop dancers. <laughs> yeah. So it, it was like, they were in trainers. I didn't even possess a pair of trainers. I was always at heels. <laughs> On paper, it was just like, this is weird. This is not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> but I just knew from Edel, I knew we had exactly the same ambition, exactly the same. Uh, we just connected on some sort of level. And yeah, and that was kind of just the start, really, um, of how we started to kind of, you know, 
form ourselves together, go into the studio, write songs. And we did that for about eight months, but we didn't have Lindsay at the time. We kind of yes. felt there was somebody missing. Mm. Um, and then we went on the hunt and we found the fabulous Lindsay. Yeah, it's weird. Jesus. Sorry, I had like a list of questions to be like, right, you know what? Oh, I'm like, sorry. No. Oh, no, no, no. I was like, I'm going to like move her through this. I was just like, oh my god it, it, it basically no you basically just did it in like the perfect sense that's why i was just stopping here like and obviously people can't see because it's podcast but i was just like i know yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. but it's not yeah. mad like you know obviously going from you know dancing in your living room to be like yeah i just you know want to follow this and then like everything else and what just like randomly like digs lane got failing you know chat yeah. with ones and like, ma- th- like that's just it's it's these kind of stories that I mean like you just yeah you just don't hear about really like even like now if you kind of put it to like general terms and day other kind of bands that you know start up it seems to be this kind of style of oh people will go in as obviously you know everybody kind of wants to be their own star in that sense but then it'll be like from shows like I feel like my what I've grown up with is a lot of like Axe Factor or like you know um yeah. things like that where they kind of pair them off from that but it's funny yeah. to hear about like how these things happen like organically and you know to yeah. like such an extent with yourselves like that was like like is so successful like it's mad to think yeah. that like you guys just <laughs> end up turned up didn't even know she was a twin just turned up yeah for I it. know and like following those feelings and like I mean here we are in the interviews now Jesus God who would have thought I know and you know what? <laughs> and it, it, it's funny because like th- then you you really kind of know that those things are meant to happen because mm. for us to meet the way we did and then you know, for Lindsay, like Lindsay grew up in Greece. She didn't move to Ireland until she was 13. Mm. Um, and then she, it, it, just the whole weird, like Mark Sheehan from the script and Graham Cruz used to do these dance classes out in Rap Down <laughs> School. <laughs> and Lindsay was in one of the classes. And I remember Graham going, oh my God, we've got this girl and she's amazing. Mm. And then Edel and Kiwi used to dance with Mark and Graham, like in, it, you know, it's just, it was just a, such a small little world. Yeah. Um, and I think actually we were only talking the other day. It's just like, I think we're one of the, one of the nineties bands that literally didn't, you know, were, weren't put together. Mm. You know, there's not many of them that um, just kind of found each other. Yeah. Um, and like to have be so random, like age difference and different kind of countries and different, you know, it is just, that's why I suppose you kind of really, you really feel it was totally meant to be. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Um, because yeah, just, I suppose of the circumstances and then of the different backgrounds and it was, yeah, it was kind of weird. <laughs> and, it's, and it's also like, you know, growing up as a, as a child, I remember I used to listen to you know, like, you know, Debbie Gibson, you probably don't even know who she is or Tiffany. And I'd sit in my stool, I sit in my stool and um, with my microphone pretending, you know, that that was going to happen. Yeah. And then lit- literally like when we were doing our tour in 1999, um, I had this moment where I was literally doing that. It was one of the songs that from the album and I was singing and I was like, oh my God, this is actually what I visualized when I was <laughs> younger. <laughs> and this is actually happening and it was just um yeah it's it's just the power of the mind <laughs> and <laughs> i and i didn't even know yeah and i didn't even realize what i was doing like do you know yeah. so and i suppose as well for yourselves i mean it's funny that you're talking about like oh when i was younger you know we were sitting away like in in your like you know back room whatever singing these songs like i literally remember us we have um this guy like we tape recorder or whatever in um we would have had growing up as well, but uh, it would have had like some like you know classic you know hits or whatever like this and us and um, Sela V was one of the ones that was always coming up that like oh again, god that, yeah. uh, not oh my god I hope this isn't like being like rude or anything but like no. it is like one of those ones that like I've heard so much through up like during childhood or whatever like that so it's hilarious now that like I mean this is what I'm like comparing it to like imagine you know you're chatting with like. Whoever, you know, yes. say it was like, you know, Debbie <laughs> or whatever. That's like the comparison I'm pulling. It's like everybody everybody lives, you know, the same kind of lives realistically. <laughs> like, yeah, I know. It's just hilarious, isn't it? That's like, oh yeah, no, that's exactly what I used to do when I was younger. <laughs> I know, it's so funny. And it, it, it's funny that you said that because like even like you with the, you know, the tape recorder and, and, and listening to stuff like that. And, you know, as a child, your mind just does kind of, 
you know, expand. And mm. it, it's so good because there's so much possibilities like that, you know, and it, it is, I think as, as young kids, they naturally just do it. Do you know what I mean? Whereas I think as the, the more you get older, you kind of overthink things a little bit. Mm. It's just like, you know, just, yeah. So that must be bizarre <laughs> for you. But I suppose as well from this, you know, it's, you're telling me about how obviously you and all the girls met and how it all kind of came together so organically. But like, what was the kind of inspiration, I suppose, behind this, like, be with as you guys as a whole? Like, was there anyone or anything that like particularly influenced like yourselves or the group or because I think it's a very particular you know kind of yeah like pop as well as what well, yeah you know what I mean like well, I don't like, know yeah I mean we didn't start out like that because I think Adele wants to be like TLC and so did like <laughs> Lindsay I mean you know um I just knew I loved kind of um I loved I loved pop kind of pop music mm. I love stuff that I could just dance away to um but as regards the direction of that, it didn't really happen until we kind of met our producer. Mm. Um, and he he took us on a development deal. So it was kind of, um, well, we, we kind of got a manager first. And it was a lady called Kim Glover who used to manage Ant and Deck when they were um, PJ and Duncan. Oh. So you, when they were having <laughs> oh, wow. their, pop, their pop career. So she took us on and she we, we moved to the UK and it was very much like, you know, shopping us around to producers and, mm. you know, different writers and stuff like that. But when we met Ray, um, he had a boy band and he had a girl, us, and we were both on development deals. Mm -hmm. And what he did was he just gave us all dictaphones. So he said, no matter where you are, just record your stuff, put your, put your melodies down, put your words down. Uh -huh. And we just ha constantly had to send them to him. So the, the idea of, <laughs> Sorry, I know, I know, yeah, I know, because there was no technology like that the way there is now. But uh, <laughs> he, and so Idel Salavi came from Idel. It was she had come up with the verses of Salavi, mm. um, different lyrics, but that's where it started. And then I think you know the concept of actually putting Irish music into a pop song. We were like, going oh, what? That was his idea, but it was just like that's weird. You're either going to love it or hate it. Yeah. And I think all the other quirkiness kind of just came from us. It's just like um, all the sayings like, you know, what do you like? And, you know, <laughs> fight like me down, all that. That came from us just yapping to each other, kind of chatting <laughs> and him kind of going, what are they talking about? Like, you know, the way if somebody was saying, saying something as an Irish said, you go, shut up. Yeah. Like, as if say, you're not, as in saying, you're not serious. And we used to do that like all the time. And they were like, what do you mean? Why are you telling me to shut up? Like they would take it literally. Yeah. So he was, he was just on overload with all of our sayings and <laughs> stuff. That, so he, he just really wanted to use them. Um, so I think uh, that's kind of where the, the quirkiness, I suppose, because mm. he was a bit mad as well. Um, yeah. So it was just, yeah, bizarre. But good. Yeah. <laughs> but good yeah exactly yeah guys just record um all those like things that you just said on dictaphones and yeah, yeah. we're making the songs that sound all right yeah grand like uh, i imagine no. that from my perspective like i'm like from arma <laughs> so yeah. i imagine like you know somebody going out like pure nordy accent be like about you <laughs> like what's happening like, <laughs> i know yeah, yeah, it just totally. sounds hilarious it's like yeah we're gonna chuck chuck this in a record it's be like no what <laughs> yeah yeah exactly it just sounds like what you know but then i suppose they became really iconic you know yeah, and, that's the, it, and, like. the, and then the irish music became really iconic too so mm. um the amount of people that have we've heard stories of like you know especially at weddings where people have broken ankles and light and god knows i mean there's been so many because it comes on and they people just go wild triggered <laughs> Yes, triggered. <laughs> that's a good word, actually. <laughs> and I suppose, like, I mean, yeah, I suppose that that's hilarious that, like, you know, still to this day, it's still, like, you know, so many people, like, I suppose that's what, like, I, why, like, I mean, it's so impressive that, like, still to this day, it's such a staple kind of song, like, within, you know, within this kind of, like, Y2K, like, generation of, like, you know, of music and, you know, iconography and all, all the rest of it. Like, that's why, like again, was one of the reasons that whenever, like, I got in touch, yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah, like, c'est la vie. Like, <laughs> I, mean, I, 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 like, I mean, it's amazing. 
<laughs> I know, I know. And it's and funny I'm sure because you must be sick of it by now as well. Sure. You don't actually, because you know, the funny thing is, is that um, since the big reunion, which happened seven years ago, we yeah. were back, we were back gigging and, um, you know, we've been like only the year before last, we were in Australia, like for three weeks of a tour. And, you know, we've been just kind of, you know, everywhere. And it's almost like, <clears throat> We used to do the Say La Vie at the beginning of the set, come out to Say La Vie. Oh, and wow. then what, and then <laughs> oh, what we bang. did was like, actually, <laughs> no, we were doing a tour and the guy was like, leave it till the end. So, and that's what we used to do when we did our own tours. But hmm. so we changed it up and like, it's the amount of people say that haven't heard you do it live or see you. So the reaction is always so overwhelming. Like it just... <laughs> It, it really just like raised the roof like and it was very when we came back after such a long time and we did the Hammersmith gig in the Apollo mm. um, for the big reunion and five came on first and then we came on after that and the reaction it was just like I hadn't been on stage in about 13 years and even just mm. doing stuff with the girls it was just like I can't explain it. it was just like wow this is incredible like you say a lot of people were triggered <laughs> <laughs> yeah absolutely um, in a very good way so you don't realize the impact of that actually mm. yeah um and everyone loves to kind of you know go back to their childhood and the nostalgia has been so so big mm. um for people so yeah it was uh it's it's great you don't you don't get because you get the energy from the from the you know the audience mm. that haven't um we did electric picnic in the throwback stage there i think it was two years ago mm. and like that i mean they had to there was the tent was overflowing <laughs> and they had to there was so many people moving from the main place over like the people that were there were just like this is ridiculous and I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I was like really um, guys are gonna to need to get some barriers up soon like <laughs> i know and it was just like and even that like thinking that you could ever play electric picnic because you know it was perceived as you know cheesy pop and you know mm. people were trying to be cool and and then we're doing <laughs> the fact that we even did electric picnic in the throwback you know it was actually it's like how how we're, we're retro now <laughs> we're actually retro <laughs> we've gone into that stage <laughs> I mean, I would say, you know, more classic, really. That, that, oh, that'd classic. be my okay, classic. Classic. Yeah, classic. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Shay. Come on now. Yeah, um, okay, I then. suppose, like, <laughs> I, but I suppose, like, that maybe, like, leads me on to, like, has there been any, like, major, I, I mean, God, like, I know there must be so many major, like, standout yeah. things that kind of came from this career, like, you, with the girls, and, like, even on your own path as well. Like, I mean, even yeah. to, like, you know, dance with stars and all the rest of it. Like, oh, I know. there's like, have there been any? But like, in your own mind, any particular ecstatic moments from you know all this career, all the side that like maybe you never thought could have happened. Like, I'm I'm sure there's probably countless. Yeah. <laughs> there, there, there's there's a few. There's like the first time we did Top of the Pops. So you mm. grow up as a child watching Top of the Pops, mm. and then the very first time we're doing it, you're standing in a corridor with the Bee Gees and Celine Dion, and you are top of Top of the Pops. And like that in my head was just like, what, what? Like I've been watching this program since I was seven. How did this happen? It is really, really bizarre. And then, but the work, then watching it back. So you sit, because yeah. you pre-recorded. So then you're sitting in your front room going, oh yeah. And they're going through the countdown. They're going, what? Now we're coming up. And that to me was like really, really surreal. Mm. Um, and things like as a child, I grew up watching say the Royal Variety Show mm. <clears throat> and um, I absolutely loved it and then mm. we get we get to do like a six minute kind of mashup of all our hits like on the Royal Variety and just doing that mm. that was like just to be in the theatre to be there to be part of something like that you know it's like one of those the things that you would love to do as a child because you're just watching these things um, and that happening and then as it go as it went on there was when we did our own arena tour mm. um, and it's like, so there's, these people are here just to watch us. It was just that in itself was like mind blowing. Um, <laughs> it was just like, how is this happening? Um, is there, do you have like a favorite like gig from doing any kind of those big ones that like, or even if like, the big ones stand out as much as like the, you know, smaller ones? Well, do you know what? Dublin, at the time, it was the Point Depot. It's the three arena now. But like doing Dublin and playing that to a sellout, we did two nights. And it was kind of like, um, 
it was like, how did this happen? And then to do our, our opening night in Dublin and have all your family and friends yeah. that have kind of been supporting you for so long. Um, <laughs> and, and then like the whole America thing as well, that was just, that was just like crazy. Um, surreal. That was surreal. <laughs> and I think the first tour we did over there, we supported NSYNC, but it was, our, it was us and Britney that were supporting them. And it was just like... <laughs> Yeah, it's you can't even, Sorry, even yeah. just saying that out loud. Even yeah, I know. That, even things, sound, yeah, I me, know. <laughs> but, me and Brittany. Yeah, me, me and Brittany were sporting insane. Bye, yeah. bye, bye. Yeah, because she, <laughs> she had just released "Hit Me, Baby," and in America, it's different. It kind of slow when they release it. The the song slowly builds up in the charts. Yeah. In the UK, it's just like they put it out there, but it either goes in, you know, when it's released, and that's it. So it was a very different setup. Mm. Um. And then like we, we used to have, we did a, a show in Disneyland um, and it was just like a half an hour show. And that went on a rotation on the Disney channel in the States, like three or four times a day. Oh my so God. that, <laughs> so that's how I know that's how <laughs> the album kind of just climbed up. And, you know, that was to be, America was amazing because you got to tour for three months. So there was less press mm. and less, you know, and, and also, people bought the albums they were really into their albums over there so you'd go mm. to the mall and you'd do like a two three hour signing and then you'd go and and the great thing is that you were just constantly on tour and that's the best bit where when you're doing promotional stuff you might do a few performances on tv but then the harder bit is like you know doing all the interviews and back to back and you're sitting in a room for 10 hours and you're just going a bit mad and then they're feeding you chocolate and when you're in France they're giving you fabulous gorgeous cakes <laughs> Do you know what I mean? You just like macaroons just keep... around the corner. Uh, I hear you. Totally, like just to keep you going. And I think, and I, and I think that's also a thing. I always wanted to do a job where I was perf- been able to perform and travel mm. the world, and I, I got to do that. So I'm extremely like grateful that I got to see the world and you know, um, and do something that I love to do. So kind of like a win win. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. I and I suppose like. I'm always afraid to ask this kind of next one, but like, I, because I don't think there really is like much of like, uh, well, essentially, I was going to ask, have there been any like major like horror stories, like kind of from working in like, say this industry or like this whole like whirlwind of a kind of life that you've had that you probably like, you know, didn't expect going into this, but like from the sounds of it, like I know there must have been, you know, small things that happened here or there, but like in the whole scale of things, like it just sounds like you've had like such from meeting up, having organic and like still, you know, being able to keep this through and like it like it sounds like you guys really just had like a fantastic run, you know, that kind of way. Like and yeah. still like to even like do the reunion and things like this. Like I know. But I don't know, have there been any kind of like things that I suppose maybe happen that you're kind of like, oh, some some horror stories, if there are any at all. Not pressured. <laughs> yeah, no, there wasn't really like, you know, the thing with us is that we just worked so hard. We didn't really, you know, we didn't really party. We didn't really, we didn't do any of that because you're like, how can you do that and work 18 hours a day? <laughs> there was definitely moments of like, sometimes it was, because you sometimes it could be up at four o'clock in the morning because you're getting hair and makeup to be on a, an early oh, morning show at six God. o'clock. I mean, there was one day we were like in four countries in one day because you were starting the UK, got got the Euro to, to France, got a plane to somewhere else and then we're back. Like it was just, what? Um, <laughs> and that's just the way it was. But like, I think you know over time you do reach a burnout stage because Mm. you're looking at your calendar in the record label and they're handing you your year schedule and it's like oh I have a day off maybe at Christmas and as much as you really want to be busy and because when you start going international that's just the way it is Mm. um and that can be really that can be really like hard because then you're missing you've no balance so you don't have uh, a balance of just downtime and then uh you know and and work so it's all work um and then towards the that that's kind of the that's kind of the hardest bit um you know m- missing and having that balance and then I really was really feeling it towards the end because I was a bit older than the girls and mm. I you know my husband at the time and or sorry now it, you know we were we were kind of going out back then and 
he was in Ireland and I was like traveling the world, having the time of my life. And I think I got to a stage. At, like, catch up with you on the MSN. Yeah. Yeah. So like at that time, I kind of wanted to just come home. I wanted a bit to be a bit more settled. I wanted mm. to kind of maybe start a family. I just kind of wanted a little bit more, more normality. Mm. So we had at the end, then we had got dropped by the label but we were it was a shock because we were had written the third album and we thought everything was going to go ahead and it didn't so I had to make the the girls wanted to continue and I was just like I can't see us being um having the success that we've just had you know again and I was Mm. just like and doing it at the level that we did so I was just like I need to kind of change you know change so I had to make a decision not to do that with them and that was really really difficult um but then it didn't it didn't go ahead anyway because they couldn't the girls couldn't get out of the contract with Sony. They were going to do be picked up by somebody else and it just didn't work out anyway. So, mm. I mean, as regards, you know, mad horror stories between, you know, like us, there wasn't my Stephanie Dell would probably would have had a little bit more kind of argy bargies than than anyone else. But we have this like really intense relationship. You know, you do become like sisters. Um, And it was just like, uh, that's just the way it was, you know, but like we were the best of friends, do you know what I mean? Mm. So it's kind of, um, there was no major, like, yeah, no major, major argy bargies or horror stories or anything like that trying to get in there to know between between the girls no, no Maastricht <laughs> no no god yeah they were they were like all preoccupied <laughs> <laughs> Justin was Justin was seeing Brittany at the time I think um at that stage yeah so they were very much yeah on their own buzz they're they're amazing though I mean if you ever saw them mm. live they are incredible like mm. incredible um that whole experience was amazing yeah yeah you know so I, know. I suppose now um I did uh, reach out on to my Instagram not that I you know many people you know follow me no but like still this, though but just in case as well I know that you put up your story and we did get a couple of questions back now and I think yeah. I'm gonna throw them in here if that's all right yeah, did, now yeah, First one is from, actually, very dear friend of mine, Georgia Parkinson. She's going to be loving them. She's getting a shout out now. Um, okay. But, Hi, Georgia. Um, <laughs> you kind of did explain it earlier, but it was kind of like that. How did you create the most iconic song of the yeah. 20th century? <laughs> that was her kind of question. I know you kind of touched on it earlier, to be fair. I, like. <laughs> I know. It was our, our madness with a producer who was, his nickname was the Madman. Ray Hedges, you know, Martin Brannigan and Tracy Ackerman, they, they were the people that, you know, were involved mm. in, in, in the song. And it was a combination, I suppose, of our wackiness and well, I wouldn't even say it, just quirky. Odd, probably. Odd, Odd. maybe. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it was, a, it was definitely a group effort. <laughs> mm. um, next one kind of comes from this. Some of you actually don't know at all. Um, Robert E. Harris was is actually asking, this is probably going to lead kind of on to the last question as well. When can we expect new material from the band? Oh my goodness, I know. You know You're what? like, I get this every interview. God. No. Do you know what? We did a cover of uh, Wilson Phillips' Hold On, I think, last year. Mm. and that, Because we, I love that song. Um, you know, we have tried over the years to kind of do something. We did something with the Pledge and we brought out an EP a few years ago. Mm. It's actually kind of, it's pretty impossible, to be honest, because <laughs> I'm in Ireland, Lindsay's, Kiwi's in London, Edel's in the Wirral, and Lindsay's in <laughs> Manchester. And we have tried to do that. We've all got like, well, my Stephanie Dell, our kids are a little bit older. Mm. So we, like Lindsay has got like a three-year-old and a one-year-old. Kiwi has just had twins. Mm. Like they're about three months old. Like life is just really, really mentally busy. So, mm. um, uh, sorry, Connor, my doorbell has just gone. Sorry, can oh, I just, let me just, it, sorry, just let me go. It's probably a package delivery or something. No, Hang oh, on. Go for it. Don't Hang worry, it's all. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> it wasn't my Nespresso capsules. I've been waiting for a week and a half and I was just like, that's them. It wasn't, it was my husband. I don't know why he actually, <laughs> I don't know why he didn't use his I key. Love the, 
I love the disappointment there. Oh, it's just my husband. I know. Yeah. Yeah. He was meant Not to be gone. Person. He's back. Why are you back? <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah so yeah you're kind of answering just that um you know obviously it's everybody's scattered all over the place and it's yeah basically impossible <laughs> it is I mean we have tried <laughs> we have tried and then it's one of those things you know then we were kind of like well what direction do we want to go and then it's just like we mm. can't seem to agree on that particular page either <laughs> so um yeah anyway maybe in the future when Mm. I don't know. The it's it, it is tricky though with the kids and trying to mm. do that as well. Like so, um. and I suppose another one I have down here yeah. is what um, do you have? I mean, because Y two K that kind of like era of you know, er, like end of nineties into noughties, whatever like this. There's some there's some pretty I mean. I want to say questionable, um, you know, styles that came around that time. But do you have a particular, you know, from anything that you've done around then or, you know, even up to like whatever now, any like favorite outfits or whatever that you and the girls maybe had in her? Because to be fair, I think you kind of dodged many of those bullets. You know what I mean? You didn't have the Britney full like in denim yeah, dress and everything I know. like that. <laughs> you know well, what? was there anything that like looking back you're like oh wow <laughs> wow in a good way or wow in a bad way I mean it's true it's a devil's advocate well do you know what <laughs> I love I loved actually our our um outfits that we wore on tour there was like this it was denim but it was like metal and chains and it was just like it was really good and then somebody like I think little mixed it a little um because some of their outfits were like very like so their denim stuff was kind of like what we were. But I think it's actually it actually had it's kind of stood the test of time with the denim. Mm. It actually when I look back kind of going, oh, I didn't think we were. They're actually quite cool. But at the time, it didn't really feel like that either. Yeah. Do you know <laughs> what I mean? But I think uh say la vie, like the actual what we were wearing and my hair and the whole thing. It was just like because what actually happened was. The stylist, somebody had robbed all our clothes the night before that. And we were literally had. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> all the clothes got robbed. So. <laughs> what a random, like, I know. yeah, we're just going to chuck yeah, all these. Like. Totally. So that, that, I remember Donna Air on MTV going, oh my God, it looks like they just ran out to Topshop and bought bits and pieces. That's literally what we, that what was done. Because, um, <laughs> Like we didn't even have a hairstylist on that shoot. Like we just had a we had a makeup artist, but the makeup artist, mm. it, like you know, we have like a few different. Yeah, so that was kind of that's probably my least favorite. Yeah, and it and yeah. it gets played no. the most. It's like oh, that's what I was gonna say. It's like yeah, so the one that you're kind of like mm, probably could like tidy that one up a wee bit. It's like no, that's the one that's gonna be stuck. You know, yeah, replaying on everything and like, everything. But sure. But sure. <laughs> It was a territory, but I suppose as well, like, I mean, what does the kind of future hold for yourself, Sinead? I suppose just yeah. because, as I said, there's been so many, like, outstanding things that kind of happened. And again, from the reunion, from, you know, different, like, TV appearances and things yeah. like this. Like, is there anything that, like, any big goals that you want to achieve that you maybe haven't yet? Because it sounds like you've just had, like... And like ridiculous go with yeah. like, do you know what I mean? Is there anything else that you're like still that has one that's something that I want to take off the bucket list? Not really, actually, when it comes to the terms of <laughs> like of of that sort of career, you know, one of them was dancing with the stars, which it was, like you mentioned there a while mm. ago. So that was a major tick for me because mm. it was something I wanted to do for so long. Um and I was away in Australia two years and it was just conflicting. So um last year was the year that I was just like, right, I'm available for the whole thing. <laughs> I can do it (laughs) and yeah so sign me up um so I was like that was that was amazing and to have that opportunity 20 20 odd years later from being in a band it was just like oh my god this is amazing um because I was always fascinated with that style of dance when I was younger Mm. and mum and dad were ballroom dancers so they met like that so so it was kind of like oh yeah I just really want to get this out of my system um Mm. which was amazing I had an amazing experience but like for me um you know, the, I, what I foresee in, in, in the future. I don't know what the situation with the girls and gigging and traveling and all, I don't know what that's going to, you know, I'd like to think that we will at some point, mm. you know, be able to do other things. But, um, you know, I'm very much into the wellness area and I'm a Reiki practitioner. I'm, you know, uh, 
that's where I see the rest of, no, I don't mean the rest, but like another part of my life. Do you know what I mean? I'm moving into that kind of area. Um, and I've always been like that, you know, um, since a very, very young age, I was always like very, very in touch with that side of myself. Um, mm. uh, the spiritual side, I suppose. Um, and so that's where I see, uh, you know, myself kind of getting more into when, all these restrictions are lifted and you can get to be with people again. Um, exactly. But yeah, you know, and, 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 it's, and it's funny because it's also a thing that I, as a child, like I used to love, like it was very much, mm. you know, I was raised as Catholic, but I kind of moved into a different kind of spiritual uh, headspace, I suppose, when I moved to London in my early 20s. So I was very much, and I did my first kind of um, healing kind of, experience like teaching um, courses when I was in my mid-20s and moved into massage and you know all that kind of stuff um so as a child like there was times where I kind of thought I'd do missionary work or I'd I nearly considered even being a nun at one point because I was just so stop yeah (laughs) because I was so I loved I loved the um the, st- the dancing nun the, I could hear, the, I can see it are now the, yeah this, are the singing nun yeah the are dancing the singing I'm singing nun, yeah. yeah um but it was because that that part that that spiritual kind of side of my life was really really big and I suppose on you know my 17 15 16 year old self like list looking back now it was probably you know wanting to help people and heal people I suppose mm. that's where it was coming from so it's always been with me um so it's just like now it's I kind of feel like the time is right to really step into that um side and fulfill that part that's that's part of me and honor that kind of you know that those talents as well that I have uh, regarding that area so that's where I see myself I know it's probably not very glamorous or anything but <laughs> no that is it. I mean as well like I suppose that's kind of one thing that like even through like this whole lockdown wherever else it's kind of like A lot of people have said this as well, where like, you know, they've kind of been able to like just kind of take a step back from whatever they're doing at all and kind of be like, oh, these are things and stuff like this. Like even myself, it's hilarious. (laughs) Me and one of the housemates, she had me that book, you know, The Secret or whatever like this. And I'd be so skeptical before it. And now I find myself going like, oh, it's actually kind of nice, you know, that little kind of like, oh, my mum's a mental health nurse and she's all about mindfulness and all like this. Growing up hearing about mindfulness all the time, I'm going like, I'm going to piss off. Uh, Yeah, I know. Um, But like, it's hilarious. Like now, here's me, you know, sitting away, like working at home and I'm just being like, a little bit zen. Do you know what I mean? Well, do you know (laughs) know the fact, like, uh, like I, I, there's another book called The Game of Life. Um, Mm. Now it was written in the 1920s and a lot of the affirmations are very God, you know, they affirm kind of the God thing. But if you actually remove that and if 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 that's not what your belief is, whether it's a universe or infinite spirit or anything like that. Mm. And there's some really, really good affirmations in it. And this was before years before the secret was going on. These these Mm. women had it had it down. But um, I would use that quite a lot. And if you are really, really like that, kind of focus your mind and do that, it actually, um, you'd be surprised um, how how things just happen. And like you say, whether it's manifestation, and that's what I was touching on before, even as a child, mm. having those things. Um, and then we lose that sense when we're an adult. We kind of go, oh, we can't. And then we overthink it. And then we're like, oh, we have to write it down, I have to say it. We just need to be free and, you know, and um, go back to that childlike kind of state where, you know, anything is possible, you know. And and, mm. and it's like it's it's t- I mean, for me, it's just like I did that naturally. It's just like, OK, now we just need to <laughs> get back to that place. Do you know what I mean? Um, so, uh, yeah. So that's another one if you want to. have, And it's, yeah. it's only 80 pages. So actually, it's a really quick read. Um, easy yeah um, get through the paper store yeah you know totally I mean? <laughs> like and even I'll have my friends ring me going oh, what's that what's the affirmation you told me about that what's this and what's that and it's you know it's a uh, uh yeah I'm always like tell say this and say that and do this and do that so um yeah <laughs> and I suppose like from this as well like I know I'm probably like I'm so close to taking up like any more of your time oh I know been so it's generous. Grand. and just in case that coffee comes Jesus like we don't want to be holding in the way <laughs> but uh, just to finish this off I've got some very quick yes. bar just okay, kind of go. word association yes. game I- okay so First thing that comes to your mind, all right, and we'll keep it quick and then I'll let you go. Okay. So first and foremost, awake and breathe. Yes. 
Oh yeah. Oh, a word, a word a yes. <laughs> You're like, yes, I'm aware. <laughs> Awake and breathe. Uh, First word that comes to mind. Or free is just do that now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I mean, as concerned as like an album. Okay. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. Sorry, yeah, second album. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, well. Sorry. sorry yeah. <laughs> okay. Dance with the stars. Oh, phenomenal. Nineteen ninety. Yes. Crazy. <laughs> Kildare. Oh, my roots. Diggs Lane. Mind blowing. <laughs> C'est la vie. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, all of my those phenomenal, crazy, all those words mixing together. <laughs> Life changing. Life changing. Top of the pops. <laughs> Out of this universe. <laughs> Shania, no, we need to speed up. <laughs> no, lockdown. <laughs> Interesting. And, of course, Finch Reviews. Wonderful. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> Lovely. Well, Sinead, honestly, it has been a genuine, absolute pleasure. Oh, thank I mean, you for having as me. As I said, something that I never expected whenever I started doing this to be speaking to yourself or anybody of, you know, your kind of like caliber or whatever like this, Aww. something that I've grew up with. So honestly, I cannot like tell you how much I appreciate Aww. you taking out your time in your day and chant to some wee specky Nordic kid on the internet. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for getting in touch and I wish you all the best and every success with what you're doing. And so. here, Sinead, just before you go, I just want to, um, if people, you know, want to see, because again, as you said about kind of like affirmations and different kind of like spirituality things, yes. I suppose, um, if people want to kind of follow along with whatever you're doing in life, where can they get you? Where can they, you know, Be- get in touch? Yeah, best on my Instagram, which is official Suno Carol. Um, that's kind of like, you know, I've been doing stuff with Wasted.ie. I've got a few, you mm. know, life, lifestyle kind of um things up there if they want to check them out as well so uh, they might help them now actually while we're in the second lockdown so there'll be stuff that I did in the first one so um hmm. uh that if they're struggling in any way so yeah yeah but um and the ro- the location that somebody you know will find you from coming through me like god love them yes like- <laughs> oh no but here Sinead honestly thank you so much again and um, I just hope you have a wonderful rest of your day because God knows this has been probably one of the best oh, you're so sweet, thank you for having me and take care no worries. bye take care bye, bye. Thank you so much for tuning into another episode of Finch Reviews. Do remember to support the podcast by giving us a like, share, follow, subscribe, whatever it is on whatever listening platform you're on. And yeah, give us a rating as well if you could, because all of that stuff really does help. And if you want to get in touch and give me any suggestions who you would like to hear me chat to next, you can, of course, get me on socials. I'm on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. It's at Finterviews, at Finterviews underscore podcast and at Finterviews pod. You can just give me a wee message on any of those. And yeah, let me know how I'm getting on. Um, Let me know who you think would be a good chat in the show. Or um, just give me some abuse. Either way, get in touch <laughs> if you want. <laughs> Until next time, guys, thank you again, honestly, for tuning in. It really does mean a lot. And I'll chat to you later. Bye.